So uh, this is the Deerfield uh, Capital Improvement Planning Committee meeting for March 8th, uh, which uh, I'm calling to order. I'm Jack Davey, and I'm calling the meeting to order at 5.32 p.m. And the members present are Jeff Upton, Jack Davey, Carolyn Ness, Skip Sobieski, Denise Mason, and Mark Brennan. And we also have with us Casey Warren and Alex. I, I can't, on my screen, I can't see your, your last name, Alex. Well, my, uh, my, my last name is Hershenretter. Hershenretter, okay. Okay, so uh, so we were uh, on the agenda. The first thing on the agenda is uh, the minutes of the previous meeting, which I emailed to everyone. Any discussion about the minutes? No, I'll, I'll make I'll a make motion. A mo oh, Jeff, go ahead. I'll second yours. Uh, make a motion and move the minutes of our last meeting. Jackie did a great job with them. Thanks. And I'll second that. This is Carolyn. Okay. All in favor? Aye, Jack Davey. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Jeff Upton. Aye, Denise Mason. Aye, Aye Mark Brennan. Well, that was Mark and Skip. I think so, yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay, so all in favor. And the motion passes. Oops, we lost Jack. Did we lose Jack? Yeah, we just lost Jack. I'll come back. I come back. It's I think it's my there you go. It's, I think it's my Wi-Fi. I, I actually, um, a few meetings ago, you couldn't see me, and we kind of determined that my camera on my laptop is bad. So I'm actually, I actually figured out how to use my cell phone as a webcam, and I did it by myself, So, um, which I'm quite, pr quite proud of. Um, but somehow impressive. every once in a while the Wi-Fi it just cut it cuts out and then it comes back. So <laughs> I don't know anything about it, Jack. <laughs> Sometimes if you connect the Ethernet cable right to your Wi-Fi instead of yeah doing it, yeah. yeah but that would be a that it's would about be my cool. pay grade, but my husband does that. So yeah, that would that would that would uh, require <laughs> running a cable to the anyway. So um so, so we were going to go through the um, the request, but but just before we do that, thanks Casey for up, updating our spreadsheet. And I didn't know if I could um, respond to you without violating the open meeting law. So there, there's a couple of uh, couple three things that that I'd like to talk about changing. Two were um, one is the um, the police HVAC request. I think we should add the word engineering because it's not actually for hardware; it's for engineering to design the system. And um, then, okay, right? Design. Uh, do you want me to put design engineering? Yeah, design engineering. Sure. Um, just so it's a little clearer. Um, so I'll put then, it in the, the name of that particular item. Correct. Yeah. And then under the, uh, in the, uh, the highway department requests for the trackless boom mower. It's, mm -hmm. it's not actually a trackless boom mower. It's a Wacker Newson multi-purpose machine. <laughs> I'll have to check the application again or the submission again just so I get the spelling right. 
Yeah, Wacker, Wacker Newson. Newson is N E U S O N, and it's a W L 32 F. I'm not quite sure what the what the what they call the machine, but I'm calling it. A I call it a multi-purpose, right? Yeah, multi-purpose loader or whatever. Um, then the other thing is that I, I find it kind of confusing to have the have in the column of the fiscal year 2022 request the placeholders, and I don't that know was what everybody how you else had it on your form. What's that? That was how you had it on your form. That was what I replicated was what you had as a placeholder in your form. Well, I had, didn't you, I have two? Didn't I have two separate columns? You had a placeholder column and the request column. Right, but but um, what I'm saying is, is that in the request column, I'd like not to have the placeholder requests because I find it number a I find it confusing, and b well, they're not. A lot of them aren't really aren't really requests. They're not requests for this year that we're gonna. Well, but they were submitted as requests. So what I think the committee should do is vote whether to include them or not include them. That's what I was concerned and confused about because they were put in as requests. So how do you determine what's what's not a realistic requ request or not when you did receive a request? Well, when we when we're saying requests, I mean requests for this year, for this fiscal year, that we're going to vote on and recommend. And the placeholders, for example, the Cumberland Farms, we're not going to vote on that. It's just going on our five-year plan, so that so that everybody knows that maybe that's coming. We um, could kick those into uh, our anticipated 2023 column. And that right. would that would eliminate your placeholder request. The confusion, if if need be, we can kick those into uh, the 2023 anticipated column. Well, right. My so my people, thought was that eventually the placeholder requests are going to be moved into other fiscal years, whether it's 23 or right. maybe even farther out, or maybe even further. Right. So but, that's the question. Do you recognize it as a request or do you simply eliminate it because it, it isn't well, those, a request? Those, I, I see it as, as something that is anticipated. It may or may not turn into a request as we progress through the year or coming years. Right. I, yeah, I, I think they need to be on the plan and, right. and shown and we need to agree to have them there if they, if we don't agree to have them there then they don't go on the plan i do i, I do too but I, i'm just talking about housekeeping that the the placeholders are shown in the fiscal year 2022 requests and those those placeholders are not items we're going to be voting on or well but that's the question you asked for application, you received applications for most of these things, some of which I didn't have references for. So if you're going to decide not to entertain those applications, for instance, for the celebration cake restoration or the display case, then that's a vote because those are legitimate requests. And so on the one hand, if you say you have to receive an application for everything, but then you don't address something that's that been put through as an application, how is that an equitable estimation of whether it's a legitimate request or not? Well, I think we're being, I think we're being, I think what, I, I think we're having a discussion about what a request is. And exactly. And some, and, and we're being told that some of these quote requests are not actually requests for the 2022 fiscal year. They're, re, they, they're requests that, that, that may become formal requests in some future year. But for example, I don't think the select board is really asking for $125,000 this year to buy Cumberland Farms. They're that's just saying- Jack, that's true. That's, that's something true, that's, 
Yeah, that's true. Because, but in December first, it wasn't true. It was. I thought we would have be able to do that, but we haven't okay. even been able to have a dialogue with them yet. So that that's not going to be something this year. Right. So so Casey, then then why so, can't it just go into the placeholder column and we can, leave it at that? I mean, so can what we is just the um, placeholder maybe column? Is that 2023? Because if it is, I'm happy to move it. But I also, it just for, it, it's mixed signals to the people that are filling these applications out. If, if you're asking us to fill an application out and then it isn't addressed as a legitimate thing. Yeah, may, I jump in, may I jump in for a second, please? Well, Mark had his hand up first. May I just jump in for a Mark second? Mark had his hand up first. Let, let Mark Okay, go. sorry. Um, can we just jump yeah. in and for the things that we know or are placeholders, just take it when we get to that line? That would be easier for me. What, what we need to do, can I just say that the intention is to be transparent and to give everybody an idea of what's being spent. But think, right. some things are just not going to happen. Like the Cumberland Farms, for example, December 1st, it was definitely my intention that we were going to pursue this. We have been pursuing it, but they haven't been responding. So there's nothing we can do before the town meeting. So it's not going to happen this year. Am I giving it up? No. But we, in our conversations over the last two meetings, we need to bump it away for next year. And then, you know, I'll update the submission next December. Casey? So actually, this leads me to a question that the treasurer asked this afternoon and I'm asking everybody because I'm not quite sure what the answer is but she asked me and she related it back to the 19 million that was approved for the sewer upgrade and I'm just framing it the way that she explained it to me um which leads right back to Mark's concern about going going down this list so the thing that came up was at the time we were trying to get bond council to confirm certain votes um, so that we could process paperwork for the application. It was difficult to tell whether the capital improvement planning committee had voted each project. And so with that in mind, I guess there was a point where she had to have bond council go back and watch one of the meetings to see whether it was an effective approval or not. So to Mark's concern, if you go through these projects and either approve or, or push them back, that would be good for us to know, not only for me to add to the, what, the spreadsheet correctly in the anticipated 2023, which is what I think I'm hearing, but also for us to understand what capital has approved and what they haven't, regardless of when it happens, the projects themselves, we should have a, have a reference for in case there's another question. Okay, uh, Jeff. Yes. Jeff? Uh, hopefully, try to simplify this a little bit here. And I've been involved with this capital improvement plan like Jack for years here. And what we've done in the past is the 22 right now is going to be your budget year. These are things that are requested for FY 2022 that you know you're going to either recommend or not recommend. All your so-called placeholders were in your future year columns under anticipated, uh, uh, anticipated items. Right. So you would take anything that you are not voting this year for your, for your capital, FY 2022 budget year, you would take those items and push those out into anticipated uh, recommendations in the future years. And that's what builds your five-year plan. So as Jack was saying, there's things here that are marked placeholders that we, we can't really vote and having a 2022 budget plus a 2022 placeholder column can be confusing. I, I agree with Jack. I think what we need to do is focus on the 
2022 actual request that we can vote up or down for recommending for fiscal 2020. Everything else, whether we want to call them placeholders or whatever, I, I call them anticipated costs, fills out your next four years of your five-year plan. And you can plug those in wherever you think they may fall, whether it be 2023, 2024, whatever. And that way it eliminates. And that's why we go back to what we had discussed right at the beginning of our first session was that each item should have a specific uh, sheet filled out, request, FY, whatever year it is, capital project request. So if you do that, as Jack was saying, you can address the specifics for your first budget year. And then the rest of your five-year plan, which would be four more years, falls under the anticipated. And I think that would eliminate a lot of confusion. We have done that method for, I don't know, I've been involved, I don't know, five years or so. Jack was even longer than, than myself. So I don't know if that's- I just like it to be not. clear communication from the committee, what they're going to push into the next anticipated year and what they aren't. Because that makes yep. it easier for the rest of us, particularly when we're communicating what needs to be submitted in the next year. Clarity, that's really what I'm asking for. Yeah, okay. so that yeah. tells me to build a spreadsheet based on what he had for information, but that distinction seems to be confusing. So make it clear for me. You want me to move the 10,000. So if we go through this list, like Mark had mentioned, then you guys can say FY23, FY22. That makes it easier for me when I'm just adding all this stuff down. Agreed. In the spreadsheet. Uh, Carolyn? Um, I just want to say, I was, I've was i been on the committee since I was a planning board rep in the when we started this committee. And what we do every meeting, is there is there any that we're gonna push off? So I thought we had pushed off the Cumberland Farms and the birthday cake and the display cases till next year at least. Right. And, and what happens is you call the list constantly and the, so you don't really have a placeholder list. You have your constant list and then you just move it like, you know, now it's too late. We'll never get anything negotiated before town meeting. So the Cumberland Farms is being pushed off, you know, till next year. Right. Wait, taking the cake. So that's pushed off for next year. We're not having to use it for, you know, having to pay for it this year um, because it's not coming direct to us from Hatfield. So, right. so, so those are the things that are yeah. in the placeholder column. Right. Now, I, we never we never really had placeholder column before. We just no. moved them off every week. Right. As Jeff said, we what we do is we continually call the list and then we end up with, you know, what we're going to vote yes or no on. Well, what my thought I was agree. That, that we would move move the item from the place. Would, at the end of this process, move those placeholders into another a future fiscal year based on discussions that we, we might have with each other or with um, department heads or with Casey or, you know, um, but um, see what also but I, we're, to go back to where all this started. All I'm saying is that in the fiscal year 2022 requests column, I don't think it's confusing to me that the placeholders are in there too. And I just like to remove them from that column. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Ken? So, we don't, I just, so my comment would be go through and Ken, I think Ken wants to speak to this. I'll shut yes, up. Yes, he does. <laughs> I think we should just do it. Mark suggested. Let's start at the top of the list and go down it. When we hit a placeholder, we'll decide where we want to put it. That, okay. That's the simplest. We can sit here and talk for 
another 45 minutes if you want about uh, process, no. but I think that's that's not okay. the purpose. I think we're, we're wasting our time and spinning our wheels. If we just, yes, okay. we all realize they're placeholder requests, so now we'll put them in a year that we think is appropriate. And if the committee okay. that submitted it doesn't like it, they'll come back to us. Right. Okay, so, so the... So the first item is the celebration cake restoration. Uh, is there any discussion about about that item? Does anyone want not to make a motion? I'm sorry, go ahead, Jeff. Not at the moment. As far as I know, I think the we cake just kick it in. Right, the cake is going to Waitley, so it's not an expense for us this year. Okay, so does does anyone want to make a motion? Sure, I'll make a motion to move it to uh, FY 2023. I second that, Denise Mason. <laughs> and all in favor, Jack Davey, aye. Ken Cutterback, aye. Jeff Upton, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Denise Mason, aye. Yep, Sobieski, aye. Mark Brennan, aye. Okay, so the the uh, second item is the display case. Is there any discussion about the, dis the display case? I would just put recommend pushing this off. And I would make that motion. Um, we're hoping to get a donation of from Deerfield Academy of similar to the one that already exists. So um, I would put it off till next year and hope that I'll second it. Okay. Hey, all in favor? Jack Davey, aye. Ken Cutterback, aye. Jeff Upton, aye. Ms. Mason, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Jeff Sobieski, aye. Mark Brennan, aye. <clears throat> and the motion carries unanimously. Okay, so uh, the next item is the Capital Stabilization Fund. Is there any discussion about that? I would recommend that uh, that be tabled until we have further information on um, uh, our financial stage uh, status with the uh, new federal COVID funding. I agree with Carolyn. Let's just table it and wait uh, till we see if we can get a little more information. The only thing is we have to keep in mind though that we have to complete this plan 60 days before the town meeting. Um, Jeff, what the information is I'm hoping to get is um, how much money from the coast to okay. And oh, there she goes. I have a question. Um, is there any very much? She's, she's still trying to talk. She doesn't know that she's uh, yeah. <laughs> that she's gone into cyberspace. I know. It's okay. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I skip. was just wondering if there was any policy in place. Like we were talking a million dollars, but what what is the policy? Is like when when is the money spent? I mean, uh, or when? A good question. When is it to be used? Right, like. So we have this chunk of money. Is there any sort of policy about when it can be used or should be used or? We decide the recommendation. The, you know, the CIPC, when we get enough money in there. No, no, I, I once, but when do we actually use uh -huh. money from that fund? May I, the, fund may I, the appropriation? I'm sorry, Casey, I, I missed that. Is the question about when the funding is appropriated or when? No, when? In other so words, what fiscal year? If we need the money from that fund, what's the policy like to determine when we actually use money from that stabilization fund? 
to the best of my knowledge, we don't have a written policy, but when we discuss the stabilization fund, uh, what, what was discussed at that time was when we get the town gets themselves in a situation where we know we need some capital, either equipment or projects, but the uh, budget that we have as far as the annual town budget, if we don't have enough, then that capital uh, stabilization fund would be a place where we could go and tap that money to get those needs. And obviously it has to go to town meeting, annual town meeting for a two thirds vote. So that's, that's what was discussed when this was created. So there is some intent there, but is there a written policy? No, there isn't, not, not that I'm aware of. So, okay. so basically doesn't the select board and the finance committee decide that they Actually, yes, Jack. And then it, Jack, and then it actually, goes to the town yes, meeting and there we, has to be a two thirds, two thirds vote, vote to use it. Right. That's something, that's something that uh, I, I would think that your capital improvement, your select board and your finance committee would discuss all of them as far as a joint meeting and say, look, these are some things we need definite need that fit under the capital improvement uh, request and we can't afford as a town. And that's when you would probably, between the three groups, three committees, discuss and make a recommendation to use it out of the capital uh, stabilization fund. But that I think, was I my think impression. Skip's, I think Skip's question is uh, more of a, a philosophical question because you know we have we have a stabilization fund, right? And how much is in that? And there's eight hundred thirty-four thousand in the capital stabilization. And I don't recall us using that since I've been on the CIPC. We also have millions of dollars in the in CPA funds, and until till the town park project came up, it we couldn't seem to find out a, a way to utilize that, you know? So that, I think, it, isn't that, that more your question, housing. Skip? When does it? We've been using that for senior housing, saving that for senior housing, Jack. The CPA? Yeah. That, Cause that's a multi-million. Okay, so, um, uh, any any other discussion? Uh, I'm sorry, Ken. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I just I I have a question I, or a thought on this. I, I mean, we started off under Jeff's tutelage uh, recommending two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to the town as a capital, you know, a contribution to capital stabilization fund annually, trying to get ourselves to build up um, a fair amount of money that can be used in in emergency situations. Uh, I know we're waiting, or Carolyn, I hear you say you're waiting to hear what happens with COVID-19. I'm not sure what impact that should have on our committee as a planning committee. Um, personally, I'd like to see us move ahead with a recommendation at this point in time that $250,000 be considered again this year, if it's at all possible. I mean, circumstances can change over the next 30 or 60 days, but, you know, I, I firmly believe in trying to, to set aside the money and have the, the um, have a pool of money that we can use in emergencies and use when uh, there's a critical need. So that's, that's just my two cents. I don't see well, personally see the need to table. Well, so. and also we're, we're just making a recommendation. Right. That's what, you know, absolutely. It, it doesn't have to go any further than that. The select board and the finance committee together they can, can and decide to they can choose to you know support the recommendation right. or support right. support it at a lower amount but um i don't know i you know i've i've felt comfortable putting that number out there and i think over the past three years jeff haven't we negotiated different amounts and ended up at different amounts on town meeting floor but um and we can agree to that and you know agree Correct. to the amendment amended article on town meeting floor without any trouble so. Right. Actually, 
actually last year at the annual town meeting, we uh, put a zero on there instead of the 250. And then we came back in special town meeting this fall and approved the 250. Right. Once we knew money in the budget. Yeah, right. Once we knew. So I, you know, can I agree that, you know, we can use the same that we've done in the past and if you want to make a motion on that, I don't know how other people feel, but I guess we'll we find can... out. Well, well <laughs> we already we'll have a motion. We, we have a motion, motion to table. table. That can be withdrawn or well, we can vote on I, that. Was there a second? Did Jeff second it? I wasn't I wasn't sure. Yeah, Carolyn can withdraw her motion. I'll, I'll, and I I'll withdraw it. Withdraw. I, I will withdraw it. Okay. I, I just didn't. And I'll withdraw my second. If she withdraws the motion, nervous. we don't need to withdraw yeah. the second. So, okay. I just, I'm okay, not so clear what we're going to do. That's all. I, I'd make a motion then to uh, approve 250, a uh, 250, a recommendation of $250,000 for capitalization, capital stabilization in FY 2022. I'll second that, Denise Mason. <clears throat> Okay. All in favor? Aye, Jack Davey. And cut it back, aye. Denise Mason, Jeff aye. Austin, aye. Denise and Jeff Austin, aye. Jeff Tobieski, aye. Mark Brennan, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Okay. And the, the motion carries unanimously. Okay, so the next thing on the list is the restroom renovations for uh, Deerfield Elementary School for $15,300. I'll make, make a motion to move it for a recommendation of $15,300. I'll second, second that. The second was Mark. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Jack Davey? And cut it back, aye. Jeff Upton, aye. Denise Mason, aye. Carolyn S., aye. Jeff Sobieski, aye. Mark Brennan, aye. Okay, and the motion carries. Uh, unanimously. Um, okay, the next thing is the replace flooring in the uh, classrooms in Deerfield Elementary School. And I'll make a motion to recommend $21,200 for replacement of uh, flooring in the elementary school. I'll second that, Denise Mason. Okay, all in favor, aye, Jack Davey. And cut it back, aye. Jeff Upton, aye. Denise Mason, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Jeff Sobieski, aye. Mark Brennan, aye. And the motion carries un unanimously. The, the next item is the uh, request from Frontier for uh, uh, duct cleaning and curtain. For the, the duct cleaning and uh, uh, auditorium curtain replacement. And uh, we're, uh, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but we're um, recommending or not Deerfield share, which is 15,242. Is there any discussion? Yeah, I have a question. Go ahead, Denise, and I'll no, go I, after you. It may be the same question. I thought we discussed this last time that we wanted to have it separated, and then we were, weren't were sure whether it was separated, whether it would go through, because it had to be a certain amount. So I was a little confused about that conversation. Oh, you mean as far <laughs> as the bylaws governing the... Yes. 
what the yeah. um, CIPC. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if that's an answerable question. I don't know either. Skip it. Move on. The bylaws are, I think, are silent on that. Um, maybe what I could do is uh, at the Deerfield Elementary School Committee meeting on Wednesday this week, I can ask Darius um, to have Darius and Shelley uh, provide us with if, whether it's a capital expense or not. Um, I, you know, it's. I think the curtain can be a, certainly be capital, but I'm not sure duck cleaning falls under that. So it, it's kind of this gray nebulous area. Go ahead. <laughs> well, my question, generally capital, it could be considered maintenance, but you're looking at a capital, you're looking at something that could be considered capital because of the building and may have come to light because of COVID. It's come up more than once at the elementary school. Right. in some of the bills that we've processed, Ken. And they did frame it as capital in the request. That was the reason you saw it. If you don't want to address it as capital because it may not fall within those parameters, then it's probably still gonna be treated as an article because it's requested as an article. Yeah. But the mm -hmm. reason you're seeing it on here is because it's framed as capital. Right. So no, I understand that. Um, the the oh. work in the, the elementary school, a lot of it was capital because there were equipment modifications and improvements made as part of the response to COVID. So, <clears throat> but, but I think the issue that Jeff's referring to is that um, threshold. We're supposed to cons the threshold of ten thousand dollars. Right. So the the total. Total request to the four towns is 32. Yeah, 35,000, 30, I think they said. Yeah, like yeah. 34, like 34,000. 35,000. So, I, I don't know. I, I, I think if we vote to recommend or not recommend it, I, I don't think it's. We just table this and do we need a motion to table? May, may I just uh, just very quickly for a little further discussion? I, I am not opposed to uh, to helping helping out here with our school systems and that. I just want to make sure as a committee we're doing the right thing. Now, to start off with, I think the two items need to be separated for us to discuss them as far as whether they qualify for capital under our under our bylaw and uh, the curtain could possibly be dependent on the curtain because those curtains are pretty expensive. That may qualify. And so you have, you have a fixed asset, but as far as the duct cleaning, I, I don't know where you would fit that in because we have here in our bylaw, any purchase on any fixed asset provided that the cost is ten thousand dollars or more so and then as far as a retro work rehabilitation and that on buildings grounds related equipment the cost has to be twenty five thousand dollars or more with life expectancy of 10 years or more so i just don't know if the vent cleaning fits into the capital language that's all i'm concerned about and because I, I don't want to vote on one thing if it doesn't work, if it doesn't fit the definition of our bylaw. And then in the future years, somebody say, well, you voted so and so and you prove that. You know, I just want to be careful that we're doing the right thing. I'm not opposed and I want to make sure everybody understands that. I think Ken has a good idea if, if he could go in. Uh, check with Darius and Shelley and see if they could break that out for us so we could reconsider this and see if it actually fit. And if you want to vote it, that's fine with me. I have no problem. I'll just abstain. I'd like to make a motion to table this. Yes, I'll second that. With the notation that I'll follow up with administration, Jack. Thanks, Ken. Able to consult with 
Frontier Administration. I think we should um, table it to consult and then also to verify whether or not this is in the scope of this right. committee. Yep, that's what I mean. I'm writing this down. That's good. I, I could uh, refer to the tape, but then sometimes it's easier. Absolutely. Take the notes. In fact, I'll probably just send them a memo. I'll try and copy everyone on it. Okay, so um, all in favor? Aye, Jack Davey. Aye, Ken Cutterback. Aye, Jeff Upton. Miss Mason. Aye, Carolyn S. Aye, Skip Sobieski. Aye, Mark Brennan. And the motion carries unanimously. Okay, then the next the next thing is the next thing on the list is the complete streets program. Is that something we talked about before? Is that I don't I don't I'm sorry, but I don't know what that is. That's what um Trevor was here. Well he Trevor was here talking about the, about the um Downtown landscaping. About the the common landscaping. But is, that's not part of complete streets, is it? No, it's separate. But it's but it all ties together. Footprint ties together. <clears throat> um, so uh, is this is this complete streets anything we're doing this year? I don't I don't see any projects coming down this year. Uh Casey, you would have a better handle on that than I. I'm not on that committee. So I, I'm not on that committee, so I don't really know what the status is. I'm sorry. Right. All of this stuff uh, ties together, Jeff, um, because a lot of these projects may now be funded through group grant programs. So yeah, but I don't. I think from what Trevor said last week. He was more focused on the common, so it may be that it may be a good idea for the committee to consider pushing that to FY 2023. I I agree, Casey. I'll, I'll make a motion to uh, the twenty thousand dollars for complete streets program. Uh, kick that into 2023 FY 2023 anticipated. Second, Ken Cutterback. So, so this is a motion to, I don't know if, if kicking it into 2023 move, is like a to move, to move the $20,000 to FY 2023. Motion to move. Or, That's what Jeff said. Or, or are we? So we're making a motion to remove to move the request for our recommendations consideration to 2023. Correct. It's it's our recommendation to move the fund and the request to Okay, uh, all in favor, Jack Davey, aye. Ken Cutterback, aye. Jeff Upton, aye. Nice Mason, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Jeff Sobieski, aye. Mark Brennan, aye. Okay, and the motion passes unanimously. Um, the, the, um, the next thing on the list is the, um, the, is what's labeled the MVP grant match dash climate resiliency, which is 384,000, which we have identified as a placeholder. 
Is there any discussion about this? And what do we want to do with it? Uh, I just want to know what it is. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's a series. It's a group of things that were identified through the select board and the work with our technical assistance coordinator um, on NBP activities to continue to pursue. The most expensive piece of that was the Leary lot, um, paving storm drainage. What else did I forget, Carolyn? Um, well, green charging stations. Yeah, no, no that that's was, in a different grant. Okay. That's a different grant. But <laughs> we're, you know, we're going to do culvert replacement. Um, you know, I mean, we, we don't know what we're going to get. So we can hold off on this one. I would recommend we hold off on this one until um, towards the end because this is not correct number at the moment. So can you explain, Carol, in the MVP program? Would we be expending 300 under this? Uh, I notice is a $92,000 estimated grant. So we're expending, we're spending 384,000 to get 96, 92 or 96,000. Is that the? Uh, no, we would, it, this is our share of different ones, but the um, Leary lot, what happened is the Leary lot is, um, we're holding off on that because we're trying to get yeah. that through economic development part mm -hmm. that the um and we can't the mvp program will not pay for the you know regular paving but they'll pay the difference between the cost of regular paving and pervious surface in, in, um you know pervious surface paving and landscaping and rain gardens and but we're trying to get our share under the and some kind of economic, um, you know, program, and so I would hold off on it now because the numbers are not correct at the moment. Carolyn, is this would whatever the number may be? Is this something that we may use in twenty twenty two? Yes, we're hoping to do it in twenty twenty two. Um, and the reason why is because it's, you know, we have to do something with the Leary lot. We want to help our businesses on um, right. Elm Street and Berkshire right. Brew and okay. whatever. And people uh, want to be so outside. The co mm -hmm. So basically we're, you're just looking for, you're basically just looking for uh, a little, uh, more secure number then um, instead of this three four well it depends on what comes through the federal program for economic assistance because we um feel like this is small business uh we can apply under the small business economic um stimulus part of the COVID bill and um right. so that's what we're trying to do right now so the numbers okay. are not correct the numbers are not correct but right. we will. You, we are trying to do it this year. Okay. Do you know when you'll be hearing about that? I'm in. As far as the number. Within two or three weeks, I think. Okay. So I'll it move. makes sense to put this on hold for now. So why don't we move to table it? I'll make a motion to table it. Great. I'll second it, Mark. Well, there was there was already a motion from Carolyn. Oh, there was. Okay, oh, good. Okay. <laughs> well, then we second. He's so Ken's the second. So we're no, making a motion the on this MVP MVP grant match climate resiliency. We're making the, the motion is to table the request until there's more specific cost information. Right. Is that correct? Right. So Carolyn made the motion. Ken second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Jack Davy. And cut it back. Aye. Jeff Upton, I. Denise Mason, I. Carolyn Nessa, I. Jeff Sobieski, I. Mark Brennan, I. Okay, and the motion carries unanimously. Okay, the next, the next thing we have on the list is the MVP grant match for the wastewater treatment plant. 
which is $1 million, which we haven't really talked about this at all. Um, and maybe somebody could remind me, Casey, Casey um, referred to the vote we took to recommend the $19 million of uh, upgrades to the wastewater treatment plant. Are we, and, and my memory is that we, we were told at the time that we were done that there were no other votes that needed to be taken. So Jack, if you refer to the application that was put through, this is for a separate um, but climate related issue that could go through the MVP grant program. It's a it's about a three point one million dollar project, I think, all told. Um, the million is what you see in grant match. Um, the issue is is these MVP grants have gotten considerably more more difficult to get. They're much more competitive, and there isn't as much money allocated to them. This might be something that gets out that could be approached in a different manner but I was asked in December to forward it or in November to forward it to capital for review. It's something that at this point, I would think you could put through on FY 2023 because I don't know that we'll have enough information soon enough to make a decision as to whether to pursue this or something else. Casey, quick question. Is that on the uh, new the new items like the outflow pipe and that is that the one we're that talking is the about outflow on? pipe that is the outflow I think pipe yes four four items that were listed there yes um I just I, I'd like to table this on the outflow pipe please. So okay, that's, a motion. A motion. that's a, you're making a motion, Carolyn. Yeah, I think the outflow pipe, I would like to, um, I just um, um, think we have a way overpriced. It does, it's just right where erosion is happening. I went and looked at it myself. It's erosion on the riverbank. And um, I think what we can do is uh, do a restoration work for that section of the pipe only. Um, right as it goes into the river under NRCS program. And uh, we just need an event. And so I would kind of like to it's see a, that table, that part of it. It's always event. comforting to hear we're waiting for an event at the sewage wait, west, wastewater treatment plant. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, how you, I'll second the motion to the table if somebody hasn't already. That's how you use that program, Ken. I know, I'm just saying. Okay, so all in favor, Jack, I, I, I. Jeff has a question. Oh, I'm sorry, Jeff. I just have a quick, quick question on this list, Carolyn, and I know we're, we're going to table it for now, maybe look at for 2023, but there's four items here on that list as far as the project that was not included with the uh, sewer system on the price that we got out of 19 million there. By any chance, would this be a place as far as project component to add a uh, collection uh, system for septic system users? I think, I think that step. was, um, I think that's one of our separated choices on that 19 million, Jeff. Okay. All right, very good. It's always been my intention to include that. All right, no, that's good. I just, just curious. Yeah, um, what, we, what we've done is try to separate the, like the sides of the tank, increasing the size of the tank, that would be an MVP climate change kind of thing, you know, so right. it flooded as easily. Okay, thank you. Okay, so Carolyn made a motion. Ken seconded it, did it to uh, table this request uh, for the um, MVP grant uh, versus the uh, wastewater treatment plant outflow pipe. 
And so, um, all in favor, Jack Davey, aye. Ken Cutterback, aye. Jeff Upton, aye. Chris Mason, aye. Carolyn Nassa, aye. Jeff Tobieski, aye. Mark Brennan, aye. And the motion carries unanimously. Okay, the next, so the next thing on the list is the Cumberland Farm, purchase of Cumberland Farms, and the amount is $125,000. I, I would recommend, make a recommendation to move that to 2023. Um, we have not been able to um, get any response from um, the Cumberland Farms people, you know, their corporate people. And so it's just not gonna happen by town meeting. My intention last fall was to try to move it forward, but it's been slow boat. A motion to move to 2023, 125,000 for Cumberland Farms purchase. So you're seconding, Ken? Um, she's made a, she made a recommendation. I'll second if she wants to make oh, it she a made motion. a recommendation. You, you're making the motion? Okay. <laughs> I guess, yes, I, I don't know. Second the motion. <laughs> And Denise is seconding it? Yes. Any more, comment? Uh, any more discussion? Yes, it does. Yes. Just, just very quickly. Uh, and again, I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be a pain, but I, I myself personally, you know, I'll support moving it here, but I would be really hesitant for the town to be buying that property. And the reason why I say that is that's a great location for a business. Uh, you know, some, some property that we purchased in the past has worked out, but some property that we purchased in the past has not. And I would hate to see that corner lot in the center of downtown being taken off the tax rolls by the town uh, if, if and when something happens there at Cumberland Farms, where that could be a prized location for a business. And that's just my thought. Doesn't have to be discussed tonight because it's being kicked into 2023, but hopefully people will think about that. Yeah, there, 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 might be, there might be other strategies besides buying it. Jeff, it would make you feel better. Bill Wolfram has been trying to buy it for um, since it, um, Cumberland Farms moved, and he has got no response. So yeah, the idea I do understand that. Some yeah, kind of partnership is to get the town to you know be pursuing it and tell them they're no longer you know they're no longer grandfathered for anything and all that kind of stuff and try to get the property moving. Only want to put a strip in of enough trees and some greenery there to use a little bit so it's not all pavement. That's really what my intention is. So it would assume that some kind of partnership would be happening there. No, and I understand. I just hope that it doesn't turn into a pocket park, especially when we just spent over $2 million a half a mile down the road to create a great uh, park recreation area. That's um, all. The reason why you say pocket park is because when you have so much pavement like that, it's eligible for pocket park, pocket park money, which would mean the bench and the trees and the little bit of greenery would be paid for by the state. So that's why we're saying pocket park, not just everything is going to be green. Okay. Just a little bit, Jeff. Just a little. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. So we have a motion to move. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to move uh, this uh, potential Cumberland Firms purchase for $125,000 to 2023. So uh, if there isn't, is there any more discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye, Jack Davey. Aye, Ken Cutterback. Hi, Jeff Upton. Hi, Denise Mason. Hi, Carolyn Ness. 
Aye, Skip Sobieski. Aye, Mark Brennan. Okay, and the motion carries unanimously. Okay, so the, the next thing on the list is the town common design and improvements. The request is for $55,000. Um, I'd like to make some comments about this. Um, in, in our discussion with Trevor last week, um, I, I, I came to a much better understanding of, of what this project is and what the costs are. And from, from what he said, the estimated cost of construction is $195,000. And on top of that is the $40,000 that we're spending this year to do the engineering. So the, so the, the total cost of that, that project is like $230,000. And I, understand, I have nothing but respect for Trevor, and I understand what he's trying to do in terms of sort of uh, softening the blow of that $230,000, but I, I think that's the number that should be on the sheet. I mean, I... I you know, to, to you know, you know, I know he he we uh, forty thousand was requested at town meeting towards it in two thousand twenty. The fifty five thousand is like another down payment, but that's that's not the cost of the project. Carolyn, you're smiling. In, in his defense, Jack, we didn't have that information in December. You didn't have the information when. We didn't have the information on the cost of that, what that, what the common design would be because the common design, he didn't have those numbers yet. Well, the common design though is 40,000. That's, that's the design, last but the actual cost to implement the design wasn't available until about two weeks ago. Right. Okay, well that's- And they're, that's all, they're actually not, talking about it later not, this week. I'm not casting any aspersions. I'm just saying- no, like, I'm if you're asking us for information in December that we may not have all the information by the time you're discussing it. So if you're asking for us to change it, then I think that needs to be conveyed to the person representing the select board on that committee. But at the time, that was the number that we had as a for consideration. You're saying now that you see that it's more like 230,000, you'd rather see the 230,000. That's completely valid. But the reasons, um, make total sense. It's just something that I think should be conveyed to the common committee so they understand your perspective on it. Because it does make sense. Can we just table this until we update on that uh, cost as far as the request for 2022 and just change it, sure. that number, and come back and vote it once that number has been updated? I agree. Good yeah. idea. I'll You're make making a motion. motion to, I'll make a motion to table the 55,000 FY 2022 request for the town common design improvements until we get a new updated fixed number on total cost. I'll then second. revisit and vote it. And is there a second? Yeah, I'll, I'll second, second that, Denise Mason. I think I think Skip beat you to it. Okay. Either way. <laughs> I'll third it. Okay. And any other any other discussion? All in favor? Jack Davy, aye. Ken cut it back, aye. Jeff Upton, aye. Denise Mason, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Yep, so we aye. Mark Brennan, aye. And the motion carries unanimously. Um, but again, Casey, the that item 
the the fifty five thousand is for is not for design; it's for actual construction. So I think the spreadsheet should reflect that. So it shouldn't say uh, design and improvements. It says it's the improvements portion of the design and improvements. Well, the improvements or the or you know the for clarity that it's for construction. Yeah. So you want me to change it to say it have a separate town common design and a separate town common improvement slash construction. Yeah, sure. That would make sense. Have it have another line. So you have town common design with the 40,000 from uh, 2021. And then uh, the next line would be town common construction 55,000. Or 195. Or 195. Right. Or, the yeah. new, or, 195. or the new updated number. Well, yes. but except that no one's requesting the 195. The, the only thing that Trevor was requesting was 55,000, like as a down payment. Right. So just Can you put the rest into anticipated into uh, the next year. Mm -hmm. Except I think the intent is to try and do it next year. Or, if yeah. he gets it. So I would just, let's get more info. I agree we can. Okay, so the, net, the next item is the town office file server, which uh, again is a, which is a placeholder. Except I just found out we actually need it this year, Jack. Okay. Um, I had a conversation with our, we do an annual review with our um, IT group every year. I wasn't privy to the one from last year because I wasn't here. So I did go through the, the items that need to be addressed. And this is actually one item that does need to be addressed. And I saw it on last year's plan. Uh, but there wasn't any information. I have more information now, just the total, maybe more than 35,000. Um, there's two items I'm waiting for them to get back to me on. And this is one of them. However, I understand what the committee's stance is on that. Um, if as, we were to I lose the... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, as an IT person, this seems like it it's um, very high. So I, I wonder if maybe there's some something else that might be in there. Um, but uh, I, I would I would kind of like to to hear more information. Um, but um, I would also like to make a motion to table this and, until we get more, more information and updated price. I'll second that, Mark. Okay, any more discussion? All in favor? Jack Davey, aye. Ken Cunnaback, aye. Jeff Upton, aye. Chase Mason, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Jeff Sobieski, aye. Mark Brennan, aye. Okay, the motion carries unanimously. Casey, do you know when you're going to be speaking with them again to get a better idea on those I'll couple of items? I'll probably approach it tomorrow. I'll probably approach it with them tomorrow. I had to talk to Brenda today, and I wanted to hear from you guys tonight. Okay. Thanks. Okay, so the next thing on the list is the town hall roof. Um And uh, clarify for me is, I, th I thought that, I somehow thought that that was like a subset of municipal offices repairs. That's an old item, Jack. That's yeah. an item that predates me. It's what I called before a legacy item. It's been in the plan with no identifying information that I could find. The roof. The roof. Ken, if you look at the rest of that, there's a 
I it looked at the offices repairs. Right. No, I, I mean, I'm looking at the, the footnote and I was going to ask what exactly the footnote <laughs> means. So you, well, you, you think that this was a, it, it's a line item that predates you that it has yeah. not had a, it was in last year. Form, yeah, it hasn't had a formal request this year that it's been right. rolled into the summary of uh, municipal building repair and municipal offices repairs. Three. That was three, how three I referred lines to down. it. Okay. The, the reason I left it there is because I didn't know how Capital wanted to distinguish the two. If you look at the $60,000 municipal office repairs, that's based on the evaluation that GRLA did of the building. Right. And it starts, there's, there's a series of things that are identified. Um, but this, I thought this particular 35,000 referred to sections of the roof that needed repair but weren't the middle sections. So this is when I say I don't have background documents. I can't see what the application is from previous years. Do we know who's requesting it even? I think it's been on there because there is work that needs to be done to the roof, Mark. No, that, that I understand, but, but who's, who's requesting it? I don't know. I don't have the information. All I know is it was there and I left it there so I could have you guys. I well, think some of you have been on here for a while. I think it's left over um, from Kevin's request, I, I think more than five years ago, truthfully. Well, I, I'd make a motion to remove it from our list. <laughs> I'd second that. Uh, and again, when you say, I think that's fine. When you say remove it from the list, just take it right off? Yes. Let's get it off okay. of there so there's no confusion. Or, you know, if it needs to be resubmitted with updated uh, as an updated request because it's too old. I think it's way too old. Okay. I mean, there's a, some pretty significant. That makes sense. Yeah, there's a pretty significant scope of roofing to be done on the repairs listing. Um, exactly. That, that was follows. The of the so repairs. I think we just remove this and see see where everything falls. I agree. Sounds good to me. Okay, so all in favor? Aye, Jack Davy. Aye, Ken Cutterback. Aye, Jeff Upton. Hi, Denise Mason. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Skip Sobieski. Hi, Mark Brennan. And the motion carries unanimously. And it is all gone. <laughs> OK. OK, so the next thing on the list is the municipal offices, police department paving. Any discussion? Um, I, I, I'm a little, uh, I guess my question is, is there what the urgency is for this? I'm not, I, I'm not really clear in my mind what, what prompted it or, you know, as John explained it, it would, it would make the flow of traffic better, um, but. So we have parking issues in the back of the building, Jack. And there's some confusion about how to actually go around the building. And when we have games um, in the spring, summer, and fall, that area of the building is packed. There's it, people park all over the place. And so by defining the parking area, it's easier to control not only the flow of traffic, but the number of spaces. It's become clear to us as observationally, as you see the number of people that attend these sports, rec these recreation activities, that there are a lot of people that are coming. So we need to be able to deal with that, that number of, of attendees in terms of their vehicles. So it's over a period of time, I've worked there for years both before I left and at, now that I've come back. And with COVID, it wasn't quite as busy, but there are plenty of people out there over the course of about three months. So you see that, that 
issue, but also the issue of flow of traffic. There's a blind spot at the back of the building. You can't see what's coming at you. And people don't always pay attention to a do not enter sign. And there have been at least two occasions that I've seen since I got back to Deerfield last February where people have almost been hit going around the building. Wasn't this also to add another entrance? It was so, to clarify an entrance, yes. Yeah, there's, there's, uh, it's taking 2,400 square feet and adding 1,325 square, square yards, I'm sorry. Uh, so you've got over, it becomes over 3,700 square yards of uh, paving that's going to be done. So yes, they're, they're expanding or excavating new areas. What's that? It's a new access point, like Mark said, it's, there's a new access yeah. point for the police department to clarify that. Yeah. So I'd like to make a motion to recommend $140,000 for the repaving of the um, municipal offices. I'll second that, Carolyn. Okay, any more discussion? Um, I just have a question. I vaguely remember last year after we voted on everything you know to recommend did we do a, a prioritization list um or my you know i mean it'd be nice to have a lot of these things some of them are more essential than others i don't know if, i well, thought we did that, that last seems year seems like we did but and i think we did we, we've done it in the years past when we weren't didn't have enough money I do not believe we did it last year, but we have done it in the years past because we haven't had enough money. That might be one thing we want to consider this year after we. Sure, definitely. Yeah. yeah, that's something, Skip, I agree. That's something that we can discuss at the end once we go down through and get everything voted and you know. uh, read that, especially if we know that money could be tight here. Good suggestion. All right, so um, any other discussion? So all in favor, aye, Jack Davey. And cut it back, aye. Jeff Upton, aye. Case Mason, aye. <clears throat> Carolyn, yes, I. Jeff Sobieski, I. Mark Brennan, I. And the motion carries unanimously. Um, the next item is the municipal offices repairs. Any discussion? For $60,000. I'd make a motion to approve $60,000 towards municipal office repairs. It doesn't specify, but if, you know, they want the whole to. back end by the assessor's office is running off. So I know that's one right. of the repairs. Yeah, no, I'm There's just saying that. There's several things to do. Yeah, whatever, whatever the list is for 60,000, I think we should begin the process. So it's <clears> based on that matrix count. Yes, I know, I, I, I saw it. I'll second that. Okay, second is Mark. And um, any more discussion? All in favor? Aye, Jack Davey. Ken Cutterback, aye. Jeff Upton, aye. New Space, and aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Jeff Sobieski, aye. Mark Brennan, aye. The motion carries unanimously. The next thing on the list is the uh, uh, permitting software for the building inspectors department, and that's $15,500. Any discussion? I'd like to make a motion uh, to recommend the purchase of building inspection software for $15,500. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye, Jack Davey. Aye, Ken Cutterback. Aye, Jeff Upton. 
Aye, Denise Mason. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Skip Sobieski. Aye, Mark Brennan. And the motion carries unanimously. Um, the next thing on the list is the uh, electronic archiving of the uh, building inspections records for $35,000, which is identified as a placeholder. And I would, they'd want their inspections more. I, <laughs> speaking speaking yeah. from a long history of having to deal with trying to find things in the planning board or the building inspector's offices, I would be heartily endorse archiving the records if it's at all possible, electron, you know, getting an electronic archive. So I would make a motion to approve $35,000 for a second. building inspections, Sorry. electronic arving, archiving. Blah, blah. That seems like a pretty reasonable price to get the volume of records taken care of. I think it's a multi-year progression, it, but it could it's be, definitely but... a place to start. <clears throat> Let's get it started. Oh, there is a multi-year progression. You're right. It's $95,000 total over three years. How, how many years are they archiving? All of it. Permit, all of it. Those are permanent records, Denise. So any buildings, any yep. plans that we have related to buildings. Right. Any, there are very any permits, few instances. plans. I'm asking how far back is it going? Like all of it, what does that mean? To what it's year? Far like, back as we have a permit record. Oh my as God. far back as we have a permit record, yes. Yeah. Back a permanent in the old record. days. Back in the old days when I was on there, 1980s at least. Yeah. Okay. Easy, Carolyn. Let's not show our age here. <laughs> back in the tw my 20 years on the planning board, I spent more time in that office. Oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but it's, it's been needing to be done for too many years. Okay. Uh, Sold. Okay, so all in favor? Aye, Jack Davy. Aye, Ken Cutterback. Aye, Jeff Upton. Aye, Denise Mason. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Skip Sobieski. Aye, Mark Brennan. Motion carries unanimously. Next uh, item on the list is the website conversion or revamp or update or uh, for $48,000. Any discussion? Did Were we waiting for an update on the price for this? We were. And right now, we don't have a plan. The, the issue with our website is a couple of things. Um, it's an old platform. We don't have an organizational structure within that platform. And it's not effective pushing information out. And the reason we know this is because we discovered it through COVID. In a similar manner as we discovered we needed permitting software for the inspections department. So I have an updated cost, but it doesn't include the planning piece of it, Mark. Um, it's, it's a little bit less than the 48, it's about 44. So if you leave the $4,000 in there, it does get us a little bit further along in terms of the organization of the website. I'm inclined to ask you to leave it at 48, just because I know we need that technical assistance. Um, Unless you'd be willing to volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> Who's? Listen, this, this, we get so many complaints on this, it's unreal. Right, I, my only question is who or what is doing the work? <laughs> so we can, there's two ways we can approach it. We can get some, we have some help built in from the we got, we got a quote from Civic Plus, but we also can hire um, a web, de, a web. I don't want to call him a designer because he isn't kind of a designer. He's actually an engineer um, oh, to handle some of that organizational structure who's actually worked in this web platform before. Um, so it would be 48 we'd have about $4,000 in technical assistance that we can do the project. And that's assuming we go with Civic Plus, they may not be a low bid on it. 
I'm trying to find out who might have a bid on the Combi's website, which is the state bid list, and I can't find anything. We've asked three times. So, so are they going to try to update the current website or change or revamp the current website or, or just start over? Well, it's a conversion. And so when you move from one platform to another, it's very similar to the conversion you do when you move from one type of software system for managing records like the tax collector's records. It's very similar because you're physically changing the platform you're pushing information out on. So how the website looks, how the website is organized, and how people find information, that seems to be the biggest problem. I only have one comment. As long as you don't follow the state COVID website, I think you can make people happy. <laughs> That is not one company that we want to recommend. I can no, you. we don't like them. I agree with you, Jeff. Oh, man. Okay, so do I hear a motion to recommend? I, so moved. I will second that. Carolyn, sorry. Okay, all in favor? Aye, Jack Davey. I can cut it back. I Jeff Upton. I Denise Mason. I Carolyn Nest. I Skip Sobieski. I am Mark Brennan. Okay, and the motion carries unanimously. So the next thing on the list is the police HVAC engineering. Any discussion? I think this is badly needed. So I will make a motion um, to recommend $50,000 for uh, the engineering of a police HVAC system. Okay, and is there a second? I second, second that, Carolyn. Yeah. Casey, do you have anything for an update from the chief here? He does have an update, um, but I don't think he's got all the numbers. Let me check my email. Okay. Well, he he was just meeting with the uh, with someone on Friday. Yeah, so I don't think that's for design. I think that's a fair amount of. Uh, I think that's just an assessment of what may need to be done. Right, and it, and it may not be. The, it may not actually be fifty thousand, but right. I, I mean, right. I have I have no idea how much an HVAC engineer would charge to design a new system, but it seems like that's fifty thousand is a lot. That to me is a lot of money for that space. Um, but that that is just for engineering. It's not for. I, I understand, but like, man, you could just about put in five or six mini splits and do the whole thing. Right, <laughs> but. Let them yeah. let them assess it. <clears throat> and we have to keep just, in mind, even if we vote this money, if it's not spent, it comes back. Yep. So Ken, that is I'll I can forward the proposal out, but I can't forward and talk at the same time. Um, so that is an engineering proposal. It's okay. not the cost of the element. It's the proposal for engineering. But it, we done, what I'm going to send you is the basic information that John sent to me. I don't think it's got a whole number in it yet. Um, the issue with mini splits is you're not circulating air into certain spaces in I know. the police department. So yep. let me forward that information and you guys can take a look at it. Um, I think that estimate of 50,000 is really all we've got to go on right this second. That's fine. Let's just vote. He'll come back for more once he has more information. John's not shy. No. Okay, I'll make so a recommendation for the $50,000 for the police HVAC design and engineering. I'll well, we got a motion that. anyway already from Mark and a yeah. second from Carolyn. Okay. Yep. Uh, okay. So, Can we just change the title on that line to show that it's design? Design and engineering. Yeah. 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 Already done. Good. Great. Okay. So all in favor, aye, Jack Davey. 
I can cut it back. All right, Jeff Upton. Hi, Denise Mason. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Hi, Skip Sobieski. Hi, Mark Brennan. The motion carries unanimously. Okay, so the next thing on the list is the is wastewater treatment plant upgrades, five million seven hundred twenty-four thousand dollars. This this isn't something that we really that we really talked about. Personally, so. I'd make the motion <laughs> just to get it keep the thing moving, but go ahead, people, and talk about it. <clears throat> just very quickly, is this is this uh Five million seven hundred twenty-four thousand dollars on projects they're going to be working on this year, or this—I mean, the FY twenty twenty-two—and is this part of that dollar request coming out of the nineteen million that was already approved at town meeting? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so basic. So basically, we're voting it again, or we're. Yeah, we would be voting each year to, to support the recommendation of the... We, we voted the money, but we need to vote the projects when they oh. are in the timeline. The, the money's already been voted by the town and, and the grant, but we have to vote to approve the what were they're doing in the year. It's over... It's right, over Eddie. As each component piece gets bid, yeah, the original number was based on estimates. <clears throat> okay, so well, I, I guess I'll, I'll make a motion then for the wastewater uh, treatment plant upgrades for five million seven hundred twenty-four thousand. I will second it. All in favor, Jack Jack Davy, aye. Ken Cutterback, aye. Jeff Upton, I. New Space and I. Carolyn Nassa, I. Jeff Sobieski, I. Mark Brennan, I. And the motion carries unanimously. Okay, the next the next item is the uh, for the highway department, the Wacker Newsom WL 32F multi-purpose loader machine for $105,000. Any discussion? I think this is another yeah, one that's kind of heated. Go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> Sorry. I, I will jump in here and very quickly say that I'm, I'm struggling with this. I know we need a machine and I know we need to be able to plow the sidewalks and broom sweep them and that. But it's getting to the point, or at least I'm getting the feeling that every time the highway department is requesting a piece of equipment, they have a tendency to go for top shelf. And, you know, I, you know, the last machine didn't have a bucket on it. And also this machine's got a bucket on it. And, you know, how many attachments can you use in at what cost? I just wish that at some point in time, if we're going to replace equipment, replace what we have. And if, if there's a true need for something additional, then that's one thing. But because supposedly it comes with it, you know, you're paying for it one way or the other. So uh, I, I guess I'm struggling with this. I know we need it for the sidewalks. I know we need a, a piece of equipment for the sidewalks. I just don't know if we need a $105,000 piece of equipment. I know when you buy a skid steer, you know, a lot of them come, if you want to get a skid steer and get a bunch of attachments for it, it's going to come with a bucket. So, you know, with, with all of the stuff that, that's been happening, you know, with the, uh, the, the folks in the highway department getting hurt and, you know, us kind of, you know, needing to have, the, the attachments, it, it having a bucket doesn't bother me, um, you know, if it comes with it. That and, you know, given the fact that it's getting a lot harder to repair, um, you know, and find replacement parts for it, 
you know, I, I think this is an investment that we need to make. And I think the last one was, it lasted for something like 18 years, you know, so for, for us to get, you know, two decades out of it or more, I, I think this is a sensible investment, even if it happens to come with a, with a bucket, you know, being able to, you know, quickly switch attachments in and out, you know, if we have to go to a, a model that's got it, that, that's fine with me. Yeah, I, and I understand, I agree with you, and I'm not, as I say, I'm not having an issue with replacing the piece of equipment, but just keep in mind that the highway department also has 28 other pieces, my last count, 28 other pieces of heavy duty equipment, and I'm talking trucks, dump trucks, backhoes, loaders, and so on and so forth, so, but yeah. I, I, you know, I, I agree for the most part. Right. And, and this particular piece of equipment, I think uh, the attachments that <clears throat> were outlined last week, everything except the broom, from my perspective, is, is worthwhile. I know that when I purchased the tractor and, uh, and the accessories up at Bement, we bought the broom and we used it one time and the dust and mess was such so much that we didn't bother with it anymore. But I'm sure the highway department has a better methodology for using the big brushes uh, <clears throat> in their use. But every piece of equipment that he proposed bringing in with this thing, I, I think they'll use and they'll use to a, a large extent, particularly for brush removal. So I support it. All right. Well, I'll make a motion then uh, to recommend a trackless broom mower for the. Uh, well, actually, it's. I think we changed the line item. Um, what was the uh, the name of that, Jack? The w w Wacker Newson WL thirty two F. It's a wackadoodle thing. Yeah. Well, for whatever you just said, uh, one hundred and five thousand. For one hundred five thousand dollars. Was that a second, Carolyn? I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. Okay. It was a second. For the whack a noodle thing. <laughs> All in favor? I, Jack Davy. I can cut it back. Jeff Upton abstains. I, Denise Mason. I, Carolyn Ness. Jeff Sobieski, I. Mark Brett and I. Okay, so the motion carried. Um, uh, six, six in favor, zero opposed, one abstain, uh, Upton. And the motion carries. Okay, the next, the next thing is the uh, roadside mower uh, for $26,000, which is reimbursed by Eversource. Mm -hmm. Any motion. discussion? Motion to approve. I'll second that, Carolyn. This is the last year, I believe. It's the last yes, year. We last year. I guess There's we own it. We're not after doing this program again. We were the last community that did this. Okay, all in favor? Aye, Jack Davy. Aye, Ken Cutterback. Aye, Jeff Upton. I, Denise Mason. I, Carolyn Ness. I, Skip Sobieski. I, Mark Brennan. Okay, and the motion carries unanimously. Okay, the next, the next item on the list is the sidewalk upgrades for 503,000, which is uh, a placeholder request. Any discussion? I don't think we have a, a final price on that. I think that's an estimated price. I think that's why it's a placeholder. I think the 503 is also asphalt as opposed to concrete. I did, yes. If I did the math right. Yes, <laughs> so, that is correct. So if we do make a motion, let's make sure we make it for asphalt. <laughs> Um, Let me ask this question. Is, is this something that we could even be at the point of being able to do in 2022? 
Yes, Jeff, we're hoping every year, um, you know, that's the number one complaint as a select board besides website is sidewalks. So we're going to do some sidewalks. Okay. Right. My only concern is it concentrates on South Deerfield and there's one section in Old Deerfield that is horrific. And it's one of the more heavily traveled sections of the north north end of town. Um, not that it, well, it goes in front of your in-laws' ho house, I believe, uh, Carolyn. So, um, yep. that I mean that trip hazard. I I was wondering, and I guess I'd make the request if um, if we could get a price for what it would cost on the north end of town, I'd be willing to approach the, the institutions up there and see if we can somehow get them to pool resources to potentially take care of that. I know Deerfield Academy took care of the south end of town, um, but we might, depending on the cost, uh, blacktop from say the Deerfield Inn up. Um, I, I can't believe historic Deerfield wouldn't be willing to put something towards it, so. Just a thought. <clears throat> okay, so do we hear a motion on the uh, sidewalks? What, just, you know, I would make, well, I'll make the motion to put it on the table for a little bit further discussion. Mo move to uh, approve $503,324 in FY22 for sidewalk repairs. Asphalt sidewalk repairs. I second that, Carolyn. So you're making a motion to to recommend this. Yes. For asphalt. As the yeah, and, and then my one question is, as the list was drawn up, um, or the uh, specifications were drawn up on this, is this intended to be funded through? Chapter 70 funds, or is it, or is it chapter 70 or whatever? Is it, is it just chapter 90? Chapter, chapter 90, 90, I mean, yeah, I'm not uh, 70, chapter 90 funds, but that it would be part of um, the highway department's paving plans for the fiscal year. I don't no, think I was asked to do this by the select board, not by, oh, okay, not We're, by Kevin. We have um, our paving project, you know, we just did lower road for a million dollars and that kind of wiped out um, our um, chapter 90 money. So mm -hmm. we are um, hoping to get more chapter 90 money for, for continuing to do some pavement in town, but okay. not the sidewalks are not included. Okay, it's so this is- Thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> I live on Lower Road. It's been hell for years, so thank you. Took us a few years to sa save up the money. Oh, so God, we got yeah. to do that again. We got to do river some. We got to do a lot of work on River Road. Yeah. Question. Go ahead. Yes, or a couple mm. questions. Yes, Jeff. Uh, yeah. One one question. Who determines whether asphalt or concrete? And number two, is there grant money available? You know, we talk about streetscapes and so on and so forth. Is there, will the possibility be there of grant money? Uh, Trevor has in his complete streets proposal and his um, town common proposal, those sidewalks are going to be concrete and that is included in his proposals. The um, sidewalk, asphalt sidewalk ones are the, you know, ones up and down North Main Street, South Main Street, you know, that type of thing. Okay. Is there a possibility of grant money for any of that work? Do you know? Um, I, 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 there is always the possibility, Jeff. We are always <laughs> looking for anything. But I would say for North Main Street, um, for North Main Street and South Main Street, um, that is not included. 
Now we are negotiating with DOT to do Sugarloaf because we want to take over Sugarloaf, but they have to, and the money was in the transportation bill. And so we're following the design process now and what infrastructure they're willing to repair before we take over the road. We're negotiating that, but um, Sugarloaf, so Sugarloaf is, is state, but Elm Street, part of Elm Street and North Main Street and South Main Street are ours and we would do it in asphalt. I would, okay. And I would have one additional question. It's kind of out of left field, but just to put it on the table, I should probably be doing this to the select board meeting instead of here, but um, is has any consideration be given, been given to putting some under electric poles, electric light poles and electric lines underground while we're doing these sidewalks. So. <clears throat> Ken, I, I have been, you know, the above ground electric poles in South Deerfield are so wicked ugly. We've been trying to get them buried for years. And I'm yeah. hoping that part of some of the complete streets will allow us to do, put some of them underground. And we had a wicked fight. I hope um, so with electric company because they took some underground and then put them above ground because they were going to charge us three quarters of a million dollars to upgrade to the Yankee Candle building. Um, you know, and so what was underground, they put back up a ground. Right. So it's just so disgusting. I can't, you know, I mean, the utility has us over the barrel and they're, and they charge us so much money and, uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's just very <laughs> because having the, all those poles downtown underground would be such a enhancement. It would be unbelievable. Well, I, just, I know. Well, I just I always scratch my head if I go into the stop into the spirit shop to pick up my monthly allocation of beer and have to dodge the one cell phone pole that sits there. I can't imagine how many times a year it gets hit. Um, but anyways, just a curiosity question. <laughs> <clears throat> so, but thanks. It's always, I, I always support underground. So. Okay, so we have a motion to, to, um, to recommend the $503,324 for asphalt sidewalks. Uh, and uh, there's a motion by Ken, seconded by Carolyn. All in favor? Aye, Jack Davey. Aye, Ken Cutterback. Aye, Jeff Upton. Aye, Denise Mason. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Skip Sobieski. Aye, Mark Brennan. Okay, and the motion carries unanimously. Next we have uh, for the uh, for SCEMS, um, their proposal for uh, expanding their parking lot, and this is to be paid for with uh, SCEMS um, SCEMS um, own um, own funds. It's twenty five thousand dollars. Is there any discussion? I recommend that we, or I make a motion that we recommend 25,000 for the asphalt paving for SCEMS that they'll be paying for, uh, I believe out of their retained earnings or the rent that's collected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's from the rental fund. I second that from the rental fund. Okay, all in favor? Uh, aye, Jack Davey. Aye, Ken Cutterback. Aye, Jeff Upton. Hi, Denise Mason. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Hi, Skip Sobieski. Hi, Mark Brennan. Okay, the motion carries unanimously. The second item is for SCEMS also. It's $30,000 for uh, um, uh, exhaust system for the ambulances. Uh, again, I'll make a be... motion. Sorry. Again, I'll to make be paid a motion. out of uh, SCEMS return, retained earnings. And uh, uh, was that a motion, Jeff? Income. 
Their yeah, I'll, I'll make okay. a motion for thirty thousand dollars for the exhaust system for Skems. I'll second that, Denise. Oh, Mason. Good. good. Yay, Denise. Um, <laughs> this is really, I, I, this is a safety issue actually. So, um, yeah. and I almost think it's uh, mandated. Sort of like the, you know, we have to do, um, if we had an inspection by DPH um, of the cells, you know, why, one of the reasons we have to upgrade the, you know, HVAC system in the police department. Right, okay, so um, all, in, all in favor, aye, Jack Davey. And cut it back, aye. Jeff Upton, aye. Denise Mason, aye. Carolyn Nessai. Jeff Sobieski, aye. Mark Brennan, aye. Okay, the motion carries unanimously. Um, okay, so the next thing on the list is the senior housing. And is there any... Um, is there any discussion? We don't. We don't have I, enough I information. I'm like not that. sure what this what this is. We didn't really dis discuss this, right? Well, we don't have a, the senior housing committee is just going to meet um, next week or so. So, I would say um, we we need to push this off. I would recommend make a recommendation or a motion to move this to next year at least. 23. Okay, any, any other discussion? Okay, all in favor, aye, Jack Davey. Ken Cutterback, aye. Aye, Jeff Upton. Ace Mason, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Jeff Sobieski, aye. Mark Brennan, aye. Okay, and the motion carries unanimously. Uh, then we have the uh, the senior senior center church feasibility study for fifty thousand dollars. Jack, this is a left. This is a legacy thing. I didn't know what to do with it, considering that we have more information, more refined information than we did last. Isn't this essentially what's right underneath it? Yep, except it doesn't include the church. There's two things in play there, um, Ken, and it's, we're waiting to see if we get a grant for the 17.5 of the 42,500 estimate that is below what Jack just asked about. Okay, so does someone want to make a motion to um, to remove this from the list? I'll make that motion. And the hundred and fifty thousand in twenty twenty three. Well, that was that's what we just voted voted on the hundred fifty thousand. Uh, Carolyn made a motion to move it to two thousand twenty three. Right. There and was this, another one, Jack. There's another one hundred and fifty thousand under the feasibility study. So we we didn't know really what we were doing. Um, I mean, it's again, it's a place. So let's just remove. Yeah. So may I? May I just may I? Jeff. Yes. We we have we have a building committee that's meeting on this stuff. Right. And I I believe they're going to have a meeting. I think it's this week that they are going to be discussing this as far as. Uh, trying to create a plan on where and how we should head with this as a town. And they were going to make recommendations, I, I thought. I thought it, is it a little premature for us to be voting on this no. before we hear back this, from? This is a motion to remove a legacy item from our list. I think they're reviewing a feasibility study. Or a basic study, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, well, yes, they are, but they they could be looking for some money for for that uh, church feasibility study. 
That's so, that's my only concern. If so we I, if we if we eliminate it from from the list here at this at this time, then are we going to have to come back to try to address it if they're recommending that we do a feasibility study for the church to see if we can actually do anything with the church? Well, Didn't well, we the, just the, do that? The, re, the request actually says that it replaces the Senior Center Church Feasibility Study. So the 42.5 replaces... Finished the GRLA study. The GRLA study shows what the recommendation is to do with the church. But that might not be what the town should do. You may get into a situation where your building committee recommends something completely different. Your building committee may recommend to demolish it. Your building committee may recommend to re retrofit it to a senior center. Your building committee may recommend to retro it to senior housing. Who, who knows? And I think, I think all that still needs to be discussed and, and planned. But that's just my thought. If you, if you want to move it along and move it along, I'll just vote accordingly, that's all. So we're, we're talking about the senior feasibility legacy item for $50,000. Which yeah, the, the the motion I made was to clear out the old item, right? Not okay. to discuss the actual study that we will be voting on next. It's just to clear right. out the old item, I believe, right? Right. Otherwise, I'm going to withdraw my motion. But that's right. well, that's and, what I thought my motion. The was next for. item, the next item, the forty-two five. Uh, the their request states that it replaces this fifty thousand legacy item. So. To me, we but should at just the same we time it, it doesn't address the church. It, it addresses the senior center, but it doesn't address the church. That's my concern. Are we going to leave are we going to leave the church with with no money if they determine that we should do a feasibility study on the church? And I hear what you're saying. The next next item. <clears throat> addresses the senior center but it doesn't address the church and i think i think those two things have to be addressed basically at the same time you know what happens if it's determined that the church is your best option to repurpose that church as a senior center and then do the senior center with senior housing and so, maybe get a private private developer in there I, I would just hate to see us in a situation where we didn't have money to do one if we were going to try to do the other. That's all. So I thought that the senior center needs assessment was more of a demographic thing where it was going to pull folks in town and, and do a feasibility study on the, the, the need for having a senior center and not evaluating the specific buildings themselves. That's. So yes, the needs assessment addresses the senior services that that seniors would like. Independent the of the church, independent of the building, right? Independent of the church, because once you know what they want, you you figure out the feasibility piece of this is figuring out how best use how best how to use the building. So so the the re, we're talking about now the forty two five. Which, which is broken down into two components. One is the needs assessment, the survey of seniors, which is a total of uh, $35,000. Um, the town of Deerfield's share is 17.5. And then uh, Waitley and Sunderland pick up the rest. So, so 17.5 of the 42.5 is a needs assessment. And then, what does this say? Those numbers. Uh, 
We're not sure exactly what the feasibility cost is going to be, Jeff. It's a guess. And we're waiting to see if we can get a grant to cover that 17.5, which would save us a little bit of money. If you're looking to leave the church feasibility study in there, then why don't we see what TBAC says now that they've had two information sessions on all the town municipal buildings? Right. All right, then I'll withdraw my motion. We had, we still have plenty of time to, you know, fiddle with this for a little bit. Can we just table this till the next meeting then? Yeah. Okay, I make a motion to table this to the next meeting. If that we need to do that. And is there a second? Yes, second, second. Carolyn. All in favor? Jack, aye. Jack Davy, aye. Jeff Upton, I. Denise Mason, I. Carolyn Ness, I. Jeff Sobieski, I. Mark Brennan, I. Ken, I think you forgot to vote. Yeah. You're muted. Is he still with us? Yes. I mute. I muted to uh, have a conversation and disappear for. 45 seconds. So yes, my Ken cut it back. I <laughs> sorry. Okay. So the motion carries uh, unanimously to Is table the discussion of the. Here, the current request for the senior center needs assessment and feasibility for 42 five. And that's composed of 17.5 for the needs assessment slash demographic research and 25,000 for a feasibility study of And I, I'm very, uh, myself, I'm very unclear of what that feasibility, is that a feasibility study of the current building or of, of a, a building that might be constructed? I don't think it has anything to do with buildings actually. I think just what the seniors need and want maybe. Well, no, that's the, that's the demographic study or the, the needs assessment. Oh, but then the, the 25,000 is Deerfield and there's a notation, John's estimate be. for a feasibility study, 35 to 45,000 for a 10,000 square foot building. Oh, okay. And he's... Personally, I think we might want to table this as well until the committee meets um, to give their final recommendations. I agree. Because it all, all these feasibility studies, I think, tie together. They do. They do. They should. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You need to hire someone to figure out everything. Exactly. So I make a motion to table this until we get more information. I'll second that, Jeff. Okay, all in favor? Aye, Jack Davey. Aye, Ken Cutterback. Aye, Jeff Upton. Aye, Denise Mason. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Yes, I'll be asking aye. Aye, Mark Brennan. The motion carries unanimously. Jack, is there is there some way that we could check and see? I know they they usually post, but is there some way? And maybe Casey can already have this answer that we can check with the building committee and see where they're at with this. 
if they've had a meeting and what their discussion was and see if we could get a little bit of update on this. They haven't yeah. met since the information session, Jeff. So if you give me a minute, I'll check and see if it's in the schedule on the calendar. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you, Casey. Tonight. Well, who's the chair of that committee? Is it, isn't it? Uh, uh, Julie. Julie, Julie, Julie Shelfon. Right. Okay, so then the next thing on the list is the is a request. For the senior center roof replacement, ninety-one thousand dollars. Which, to me, we got to we need a motion to table that because there we we don't we have no idea if um, what the disposition of the building is going to be anyway. There's no point in doing that until we know the rest. Right. 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 If there All isn't right. going to be a building, then yeah, I put that down as a placeholder. I, I make a motion to table that until we get more information about the needs assessment, the feasibility study. Yeah. I'll second that. We, and if we remember, if we remember the chief supposedly spoke with a slate roof expert that came down and took a look at that roof. And if I remember correctly from our conversation, uh, that that contractor told the chief that there's that roof is not leaking and it shouldn't be touched. Right. Oh. So tabling it's a good idea. Okay, so all in favor? Aye, Jack Davy. I can cut it back. Aye, Jeff Upton. Aye, Denise Mason. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Hi, Skip Sobieski. Hi, Mark Brennan. Okay, so the mark the motion carries unanimously. And uh, I guess that's it. Could I just point out two things sure. while we're here? We've just voted to recommend $7,048,324 in capital projects for fiscal 22. And we've tabled, just for food for thought for everyone as we wait for our next meeting, $1,672,742. That 1 1.6 million is more than we've typically given, you know, put it forward in one year. So. Um, we can recommend all these things, but somebody's <laughs> going to have to figure out how to fund them all. Admittedly, five million seven hundred twenty-four thousand is uh, the sewage treatment plant. But well, and it's actually it's actually six point seven million dollars. What's that? Well, it's actually six point seven million dollars. Oh yes, with the million that's the million for the outflow pipe. Right. Yeah. So. <laughs> the outflow thing is is not. Right, but it's that. just, I just wanted, wanted us all to think, be thinking about that a little bit. I, I mean, the, all these things are definitely worth considering, but I was sitting here doing a quick tabulation in my head and I said, I have to get a calculator. Um, uh, these are all yeah. necessary Here's numbers. Items. They're all necessary items. Yeah. But. Yeah, you know, we talked about before about prioritizing. So, you know, I can see how we can go down this list, and I agree. I think we should go down the list and prioritize what our recommendations are because, yeah. Once, it, once we've had the chance to discuss the tabled items. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I don't think it makes any sense. It's sort of like this exercise in futility. We're meeting to, you know, put forward our recommendations for things we don't have. Yeah. But well, also, you have you have to look at the funding source like the right. the money for the sewer treatment plants projects are already being you know it's already been funded. Funded. but right right, right. Our, no i get that i mean if we have grants for you know for other things or matching grants of course you know push them through 
you know, we don't want to lose that on grant money, but the rest I think we should prioritize. Right. It's this, just, this has always been an issue for our committee that we're supposed to consider the financial health of the town, but it's difficult for us to really know what the financial health of the town is. And sometimes, correct me if I'm wrong, that at this point in the process, no one really knows what the financial health of the town is. Well, that's until, why we usually have a, that's why we have a joint meeting. Usually right, right, point. exactly. But, we, then, then we talk about the priorities. Then we talk, right. you know, what is really necessary right. and what we can afford. And we'll have right. more information right. as we get closer to town meeting. Right. I mean, ultimately, if we want to talk about, I'm sorry, Casey, one second. Ultimately, no, 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 if, finish. if we want to, you know, if we want to sit and talk about how it's going to be funded and our thoughts on that, I, I would you know, say, then maybe some of us need to join the finance committee. Yeah, right. Not something I exactly want to undertake, but I think right. if yeah, we well. make the recommendations that we think are in the best interest, or at least I've always felt if I make a, you know, the recommendations or vote for recommendations as a committee, then, you know, we're saying to the town, these things really need to be done. And if we don't have the resources, then yes, we prioritize as Denise's uh, su you know, right. suggesting. So anyways. Yeah. Right. Casey, Casey. Casey. Yeah. I just had a couple things and sort of to add on to what Ken said. There's a there's two major budgets we don't know about right right now. And the hearings are coming up tomorrow and Wednesday, and that's FRS and DES budgets. So without that concrete information, I can say that money is really tight. Um so I think prioritization is probably going to become an issue. But what I think might be useful is if a joint meeting happened between capital finance and the select board so that everybody hears all the same mm -hmm. topical information. Because I watched you guys very effectively several weeks ago troubleshoot a lot of different problems. And I think just observationally, I think you guys would, would benefit from everybody being in that sort of same space thinking about those things. Yeah. Okay. Casey, quick question. Jeff speaking. Casey, is there is there any way that you can update our uh, FY2 uh, 2022 sheets and send them out to us in email so we can see the spreadsheet as far as what's been pushed over, what's not? And as Ken was saying, we can take a look at our total and see what uh, we voted for FY 2022. And that way will also give us a spreadsheet. So next time that we meet, if we either one, get a little more information, especially on the uh, you know <clears throat> projects, the senior center and the church and so on, if we can get more information there, that would be helpful. But that spreadsheet would give us a sheet that we could go down through uh, and discuss and do a prior a prioritized list off from. Yes, Jeff, I can do that. And I was doing it as you all were taking votes. Um, my question okay. for things that were tabled, do you want me to remove the total in that item and push it to FY 2023 just for discussion purposes or just give it so that you can see a different total is what I'm sort of trying to get to. The total on FY 2022 requests, do you want those things that you've tabled to be included or not? No, I would, I would add them. I would move them to 2023. Okay, because it's, it changes what the sum at the bottom of that column, yeah, that's why right. I asked. Yeah, no, I, I want the tabled ones to be moved to the 2023. Okay. Okay, so what I'll do is once I get all, I did most of this, at least your votes. So I can move that and, and send a revised version out to you tomorrow or Wednesday if that works. Okay. And after speaking with the building committee, after speaking with the building committee in that, if need be, we can bring those numbers back into 2022. You know, like if there's something that's going to be need as far as monies for a feasibility study for senior center in church or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Yeah. That you makes bring total that back sense. And vote it if need be.
Okay, so do we want to schedule our next meeting? Yeah, I'm not sure what what our what our the agenda would be. Could I? Yeah, could I just ask a question? I'm sorry, I didn't realize I was muted. Um, the we have a column that has requests. Then we have a column that has placeholder requests. And then we have a column that we've taken votes and is recommended. If you leave the tabled items in the current requests list for one more meeting, you will we'll at least be able to see what the initial requests were and what we've recommended out of them. And then after the next meeting, we can pull them because you know the requests don't don't mean anything once we've made our recommendations. But I, I mean, that's just me personally. If you want to move them all out to 2023, great. But I'm going to forget that they were requested, and you know, no, we'll kind of have to keep a running. The ones that I were agree. removed, the ones tabled. Can. That that's why I'm saying if you're going to move the tabled ones, then you know we don't have to request. We don't have to discuss them anymore. For the coming year, is that what you're saying? But some of those uh, items, I think, are still intended for 22. Yeah, I think I so. I'll because, populate the recommended column, Ken. Yeah, I would it's just leave the requests in the request for now. Put a table next to them, or highlight them in green instead of yellow, or something like that, so that we know they were tabled. And then come the next meeting, we can decide what to do with them. If we're going to move them to 2023, great. If we're not, they stay with us and we either vote to recommend them or turn them down, whatever. That's just me me personally. It's, it gives me a better scorecard. <clears throat> so. are, you, are you confused, Casey, or are you all set? I think I know what he means. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll just shift, I'll, I'll put in the recommended item, the things that are yes, and we, that gives you an idea of what you have to go back and revisit. All right. So we're meeting next Wednesday, Jack? Um, is that a good day? Good day and time, Wednesday, 5.30? It's fine for me. It's fine. Good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that should work. That's that's the seventeenth. Good as long as you're not drinking green beer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just keep my video off, okay? Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, what what do you guys think the agenda would be for that meeting? Anything we found out from the building committee or the for the feasibility study for the senior center or the church, any information? Maybe. I looked on the calendar and I don't see a meeting published, Jeff, just so you know. Should we maybe push it out a week? The next one? Are we going to yeah, get any why information? We, why don't we push it out to the 24th? You have a meeting the 24th, Karen. Yeah. Um, if it, you want to do the 22nd, Monday? Yeah, that's fine. That's probably better. That'll work. That'll work. Sure. Okay, so Monday the 22nd at 5.30. Yeah. All right. Casey, could you reach out to Julie and see if they're having a meeting and when that might I be? Can I can do that, Jeff. And, and I will reach out to Darius and Shelly. Yep. You know what I really like us to do is maybe Julie would come and talk on the 22nd, um, just a few minutes of what she sees the, what the direction of the committee's doing, her committee's doing and, and what their needs are. I think that would clarify it for all of us a lot more. 
Her committee, meaning the finance committee? No, the, um, the building committee. Building committee. Building advisory. Town buildings advisory committee. Yeah. Okay. So let's invite her, see if she can come on the 22nd for, you know, like at 530 or something, just, just to give us a little direction. At that meeting, Jack, we could also, for an agenda, we could also go down through and uh, start to go through the items, priority list. Okay. Have a discussion on that. I, right. you know. Yep. Okay, so I I shall post that meeting Monday the twenty second at five thirty, and um, uh, good job tonight, guys. Charge. We I didn't think we would make it through the whole list. So uh, anyone right. want to make a motion to adjourn? I just did. I make a motion we adjourn. Okay, I'll second. <laughs> Take care. Oh. Bye, Jack Davy. Okay. Ken Kodavak, I. Jeff Upton, I. Denise Mason, I. Carolyn Ness, I. Jeff Sobieski, I. Mark Brennan, I. Okay, so the motion carries unanimously. Excellent. Thanks very much.